Yo Bar, what's up and what's happening and welcome back to It's the Yo Bar series with me, Chris Harding. So, in 1943, there was a paper that was published which was called The Theory of Human Motivation and it was published in a paper called The Psychological Review. The author of the paper was a guy called Abraham Maslow and he predicted that humans had a hierarchy of needs. This theory of human needs or a hierarchy of human needs has become very popular and is actually most popular when used in business industries or business circumstances. Today, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is often represented in a pyramid, starting from the bottom and working all the way to the top as to what an individual might transcend to or want to achieve, such as a goal. Now, Maslow's theory of hierarchical needs is not necessarily unique to him. There have been other authors and other cultures that have adopted and created many similar structures to this pyramid. However, what I'm going to do is take from Maslow's theory and slightly look at the bottom structure here of the pyramid to be able to give you a really good emphasis on how you can achieve to transcendence. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs is often given or drawn out as a pyramid. And at the top of the pyramid is what we call transcendence. And at the bottom of the pyramid is what we call basic needs. And that's what I'm gonna focus on. We're gonna focus on the basic needs. So the structure or the foundation of the pyramid to be able to get to the top. And as an example, I'm gonna give you two things that I transcended towards earlier on in my life. So Maslow's hierarchy of needs represented in a pyramid and it starts from the bottom. So what we're looking at is physiological and they are the basic needs such as air, food, water, sex, shelter, and also sunlight. Then we move up to the needs of safety. So we're looking at things such as security, money, and freedom of fear. The next one up from that is social needs, which is basically family and friends. Then we have esteem or respect, and that's based around self-confidence and obviously respect itself. Then you have a slightly different elevation within the pyramid. So we're going to then cognitive and creative. So to be able to achieve cognitive or creative levels, we need more knowledge and we need more understanding. Then we have self-achieving, which is achieving a potential. And then the last one is self-transcendence. And that's a goal that you would want to, to reach. So a goal that you may want to reach is maybe possibly it's a social goal, such as you achieve something like in a job. It could be something where you want to achieve more money or you want to achieve more status. Um, and for some people, you want to achieve maybe a fitter, healthier body or perhaps you even want to choose something just as simple as losing weight. So when trying to reflect on transcendence and give it to you as a reference, how I like to think of transcendence is, is that there were two major things for me in my life that I wanted to transcend towards. So just very briefly, when I was younger, I was diagnosed with a disease called ulcerative colitis at the age of eight years old. And pretty much every year from eight all the way out to 16, I spent long periods of time in hospital. However, when I was 16, I spent the longest time in hospital, which was for eight weeks. And I lost a huge amount of weight in that time, pretty much because I was bedridden for that, that entire eight weeks. And when I came out of the hospital, I had to go back to school. And when I went back to school, a lot of people were saying to me things like, oh, Chris, you've lost so much weight and everything. And, and that kind of started to play into my head. Skip forward roughly 12 to 18 months later, and I was diagnosed with anorexia. So I was diagnosed with anorexia by my GP or my doctor. And it was four to five years of struggling with very poor eating habits around food. However, I knew that I didn't want that type of life for myself. I knew that I didn't want to be anorexic. I knew that I, that wasn't what I had aimed to do. I think what I'd actually aimed to do is I had wanted to become healthier and I wanted to become fitter. 
And in doing so, I'd gone the wrong way and I'd actually abused my diet. A second thing that I wanted to give you an example of transcendence was, and it's actually something I was thinking about the other day, is that my mum developed diabetes at the age of 66. And that's actually how I got into diabetic coaching. She was the first person that I started to work with. And then I started to work with diabetic clients. However, for me, my mum is obviously very close to me, as we all are very close to our mums. And because she had only just taken early, well, she'd just taken retirement, she was quite early in that retirement. To, to be struck with this news of diabetes was quite devastating for both her and I. So again, I had to look at her pyramid and look at the things that made the, the foundation of her pyramid to be able to transcend up towards the diabetes. So it's the same for the anorexia. I had to go back down to the base level to be able to get back to the top. And I think that's what a lot of people do when they're trying to better their health, better their weight if, they, if they're struggling with their weight or better just their general lifestyle and how they're feeling. They need to address the, the baseline. So if we go down to the bottom of the pyramid here, obviously we have things like air and we have water and we have sex and we have shelter. And hopefully for most people, those things are quite easy to obtain. I'm also going to put other things in there such as sunlight. And I'm also going to put in socializing such as family and friends, because I think they're all quite important. Now, the reason why they're important is, is that if we don't have any of these elements put into our life or if we had them extracted from our life we would quite literally die if we didn't have air we'd die if we didn't have food we'd die water sunlight i think you get the point however when it comes to transcendence and trying to aim for this word at the top here which is called growth or let's call it a goal we actually miss one of the main ones which is food so food is actually often something that is kind of diverted away and obviously, yes, we do eat food. We do consume energy through whatever we choose to have. So especially in the Western world, we're not starved of food by any stretch of the imagination. But in my opinion, we are getting our food wrong and we are fueling ourselves incorrectly. And because of that, because we are actually missing out on that very basic element, it's actually hindering our ability to achieve growth or to transcend up towards a goal or what we want to achieve. So let's go back to the scenario of my mum and her diabetes. So my mum retired at 66 and she was at 66 diagnosed with type 2 diabetes. So my mum had air, she had access to water, she had shelter, she'd already procreated so she'd already had me so sex was already included sunlight and that was fine and she also had food however her food or her quality of food was the reason why she developed type 2 diabetes so i'm not saying that type 2 diabetes is actually something that she wanted to transcend towards but i am saying that my mum's diabetes was something that i wanted to help her with that was my goal and so what i did is i looked at her food and I restructured her diet for her. I restructured her nutrition plan. And that took me a long time myself. So I actually was the one, I was actually the individual that wanted to get to the top here to be able to help this situation here with my mum. I actually had to relearn quite a lot of things. Now, before I started working with diabetics, I actually was sort of a nutrition coach and helping people to lose weight. And that was... That was fine, but it wasn't really that interesting. And quite a lot of the time, I was actually coming across quite a lot of failures in my own coaching where I was coaching individuals and they just weren't losing weight. And that was because of me. It was because of my understanding. I was teaching very textbook nutrition, you know, energy in versus energy out, which is not necessarily the case as to why we suffer with obesity in the 21st century. So as my mum's newly appointed diabetic coach, obviously I got these first four in the bag. I was fine with that in terms of the pyramid. However, when it came to cognitive and creative knowledge and understanding, my knowledge and understanding of diabetes as a disease and also how the metabolism can be broken 
and also how the gut biome can be destroyed by the types of food that we cho choose to eat. I actually had no understanding whatsoever of that. So when I wanted to achieve the potential to be able to get to my goal, which was to be able to help to reverse my mum's diabetes, I had to go back to school. I had to look at the reason as to why my mum had got diabetes. So how I was able to transcend up the pyramid to be able to reach the target of being able to cure my mum's type 2 diabetes and actually reverse her type 2 diabetes, which we managed to do 18 months after she'd been diagnosed, is I had to go back to school and re re understand the knowledge behind type 2 diabetes and how that was linked to the bottom of the pyramid here and how that bottom of the pyramid in terms of food is the quality of food and the fact that my mum was consuming unknowingly quite highly processed foods and once we started to take these things out and replace it with more whole food so the big one for me was like removing most sugar from her diet and at a point we actually even removed fruit from her diet because fruit has actually got forms of fructose in as well once we started to do this then i started to transcend up the pyramid myself and i actually reached my target or my goal of being able to you know cure my mum's type 2 diabetes it's the same for my anorexia if we go back to when i was 17 when i was diagnosed with anorexia I loved the idea of understanding more and more about nutrition. I've always had an interest about nutrition. And I think that's because when I was a kid, I was slightly large for my age. So therefore, when I was diagnosed with anorexia, I don't think that was my main purpose was to become anorexic. It was actually to better cope or better manage my body weight through my food. But it kind of went the other way. So again, I had to go up the chain or up the pyramid and actually, I did actually have to reform some of my, you know, my, my self-confidence and the respect for myself because obviously I wasn't respecting myself because I was damaging myself, unknowingly damaging myself, but still, nonetheless, I was damaging myself. So how is being able to achieve transcendence going to relate to you in your journey? And again, we're focusing on your health and your well-being. Well, in my opinion, because our food is so bad, and also because our, when you look at things like shelter, we were talking about sleep and rest and recovery, because our food and our rest and our sleep have become so poor, and a lot of us are getting a lot less sunlight because we're spending a lot more time indoors, we're actually turning this pyramid upside down on its head, and I think we always want to reach transcendence before we've done these other stages. And so where I think we need to restart in some ways is looking at the very very basics so that's what i would say to you at first in how to be able to achieve your goal is you need to look at the very basics now in today's society in the 21st century the ability to acquire knowledge the ability to learn things has become at an exponential rate when we look here at achieving potential and understanding and building more knowledge, it's never been easier to do. That's something that, you know, 50 to 100 years ago wouldn't have been as poss wouldn't have been possible to do as quickly. It would have taken much, much longer. The fact that in today's society, in today's age, we have got computers, we've got mobiles that actually allow us to be able to obtain knowledge much much quicker i think that actually allows us to get to this part of transcendence or the growth or the goal that we're trying to achieve much much quicker but i think at the same time it actually allows us to skip a few of these very very important levels within the pyramid so why is it so difficult then if the basics are so difficult to achieve and we've now got more ability to be able to acquire knowledge than ever before and we can still actually achieve growth in terms of success and status and money. But quite often we fail when it comes to our weight, our health and our well-being. And that includes our mental well-being. Why is it so difficult? Well, in my opinion, the reason why it's so difficult is because there are two things going against each other at the same time. The first thing is, is that what you may not realize is, is that your body is made of hormones and not only just hormones, but ancient hormones, hormones that have been there from the beginning. 
So when you look at things such as serotonin, that serotonin is there to give us drive and try to acquire something, let's say. When you look at other hormones such as dopamine, dopamine is the hormone that gives us reward. So a very basic thing that we're hungry, so we go to hunt, so that is strive and that is serotonin. And then we catch the hunt, we cook and eat the hunt and we get the reward of dopamine from doing that, from eating and satisfying our basic needs of feeling hungry. And that's what those hormones would have been there for. But in today's day and age, we're basically on a dopamine addiction where we become addicted to our dopamine because not only is it possible to acquire knowledge and understanding, but it's actually possible to do much more than that. We can actually now start to look at you know, social experiments going on online where people are constantly filming themselves, taking photos of themselves and things like that. But it's actually dropping out or pulling away some of these other basic foundational levels. So when it comes to things like self-confidence and respect, I think when we live in a day and age because of technology where we don't have that same self-confidence and we don't respect ourselves the same. And so therefore, although it's because of knowledge and understanding is much greater than it ever has been because of technology, we can transcend up towards growth. But I don't think we transcend up towards health. I don't think that we transcend up towards wanting better for ourselves from a long-term perspective. Let's go back to diabetes for a second because with diabetes, it's a really very interesting disease. Type 1 diabetes is autoimmune. And so it's basically where the pancreas isn't creating the insulin that the body needs. And so that's, that's different to what type 2 is. Type 2 is basically where there's too much visceral fat around the organs and that the body is no longer getting the signals from the insulin that it's producing. So basically we become insulin resistant and that's quite important to understand for people who are diabetic. However, because of the 21st century and the technology that we have and the ability to be able to acquire more knowledge and understanding, it's a lot easier for us to reach the top of the pyramid when it comes to financial success and wealth and things of that nature. However, when you look at things like type 2 diabetes, it's actually a slow burner. Diabetes takes a long, 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 long time to develop. And it's exactly the same with obesity. Obesity for an individual doesn't just happen overnight. Obesity happens over decades, usually. Now, it's actually been studies done where if you made someone obese over, let's say, less than four years, it's actually quite easy to reverse their obesity because they've actually been obese for a shorter amount of time and then they're still responsive to their insulin, which is the hormone that, that governs your weight. However, people who are more than four or five years of being obese or overweight actually find it much, much harder to lower their weight or drop their weight down from obesity. And it's exactly the same for type 2 diabetics. I work with type 2 diabetics who've just been diagnosed with diabetes. And so the ability for me to be able to reverse or cure their diabetes and take them away from their medications such as metformin, even take them off of other drugs such as glycoside, actually allows, because the time has not been that, that long in terms of them developing the disease, it's actually much easier to cure. However, when you've been working with diabetics who've had diabetes for five, seven, north of 10 years, it becomes very, very difficult to lower the diabetes because the body has become so resistant to insulin, which is the hormone, again, as I say, that controls our, our weight and, and, and our fluctuation of sugar levels within the blood. So the reason why I give you this example of type 2 diabetes is because where we're falling away from our own transcendence when it comes to health is time. Time is the most valuable thing that you'll ever be given. And there's no argument behind that. No one's arguing that. But when we look at things like trying to achieve financial success, it's almost as if we're running out of time. And so people are finding ways to be able to achieve self-confidence, cognitive and creative. And behind those are knowledge and understanding. So the more knowledge and understanding we have, the more potential we have the easier it is to get towards our growth. But 
our health is constantly suffering. So whilst we're climbing this ladder of success, let's say, or we're climbing this pyramid of success, we're forgetting the basics and the fundamentals. And when we do eventually get to the top of the pyramid, is it the case for individuals, and it certainly is for a lot of the clients that I work with, but they're actually like, crap, I haven't got the basics sorted out or I've forgotten about the basics. So now I'm at the top here. I'm financially well. I'm fine. I got there. I got to the top. But actually, when it comes to the health pyramid, if you want to call it that, I've actually failed. Now, when we talk about health failure, you can't just blame it all on yourself. It's not the individual's fault, in my opinion. The people who are responsible for this are things like, yes, OK, you've got technology and you've got social media and the fact that we're spending a lot more time indoors and we're not as active as we used to be possibly they all play a part in the reason why our nations are getting fatter and more disease ridden however when you look at things like highly processed highly processed food let's think about it from a marketing point of view so highly processed food is marketed to you and in such a way that it makes you think that it's actually good for you there's so many companies now who are marketing their product in a way where they're like diet this or low fat that or more protein inside this when actually it's processed. It's absolutely, you know, shocking. It's, it's, it's bad for you. However, you'll never really see whole food, you know, advertised or marketed in that way. Like I've never seen a Brussels sprout marketed or advertised to me, but I have seen highly processed food. And because that marketing of that food has been you know, hyped up, it actually hijacks us. It hijacks these ancient hormones that we've got. It not only hijacks from a technology point of view, so you've got things like social media that keep us more stagnant and things like access to the internet and stuff like that. However, on the other, on the other hand, when you're looking at highly processed food, the way that it's made, the way that it's created, the way it tastes, the way it feels in the mouth, all its textures, are nothing like what whole food is. And I'll give an example. If you eat a chocolate bar, the chocolate bar pretty much melts in the mouth almost immediately as soon as you consume it. It's designed to be that way. It's designed to melt in the mouth and it's designed to taste moorish. You need more of it. You need to buy another one. Whereas when you have whole foods, they take a lot of chewing, they take a lot of digestion. And once you've chewed and digested that food, actually your satiety hormone actually doesn't need any more. It actually gives sense of a signal to your brain to say, I'm full, I don't need any more. But with the highly processed food, actually what it does is it hijacks our receptors of dopamine and serotonin. And all we're getting back is, a, is this negative feed loop of give me more, give me more, give me more. And so therefore we're starting to pump more and more and more processed food into our diet. And that's exactly how my mum got type 2 diabetes is because her food was highly processed and over a long period of time is what we're talking about here is the scope of time over a long period of time she actually developed type 2 diabetes um and so that basically was where i had to transcend up my own personal pyramid because i had to relearn this stuff all the stuff that i'd learned as a nutrition coach i had to completely relearn as a diabetic coach because actually to be quite frank with you, if you learn enough about diabetes, you will learn enough about weight loss because diabetes, type 2 diabetes and weight and heavy weight, too much visceral fat, too much abdominal fat, they go hand in hand. They basically are the same thing. They're just a, one, which is diabetes, is a description of a disease and the other is a description of someone carrying too much organ fat which is visceral fat so there's two things that i want you to walk away with the first thing is is that with working with clients as i have done over the last six or seven years when it comes to helping people with their type 2 diabetes many of them fall short they come to me with their their idea of wanting to transcend and cure their health and and get rid of their their diabetes or their high cholesterol but every single step of the way they fall short of their food they fall short of the amount of exercise and sunlight they get. They fall short of dealing with their stress and coping with their stress. And stress is a massive one. So cortisol is the hormone that's released when we're stressed. And cortisol and insulin go hand in hand. So when cortisol is high, insulin is high. 
and the likelihood of you putting on weight when you're stressed is is you know phenomenal but like i say to my clients you kind of have to take yourself aside and have a word with yourself and say if i really want to achieve this pyramid of of growth here where i'm looking to better my health and to be more mindful of myself then you need to go right back down to the basics and you need to include the right foods you need to include the right amount of stress relief and sleep is again very very important and then you start to build on these and, it's a, and that leads me to my next point that that's what i had to do with myself when i was diagnosed with anorexia i didn't know it at the time because i'm wasn't as mature as i am now but i knew that i didn't want to have this label of anorexia and so what i did is i just went back down to the basics and i just started to rebuild my food and actually from a really strange point of view because i'd cut out so many foods in my diet it was really easy to reintroduce whole food into my diet because even whole food was 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 now the culprit you know i wasn't eating really anything per day so when i actually addressed my anorexia with myself and had a word with myself i actually started to look at introducing whole foods back into the diet and that's what i wanted to do and the reason why i wanted to introduce whole food back into the diet is actually because i didn't want to put on weight i still had this anorexic brain i was still thinking from the terminology that oh, i'm you know I'm, I'm i'm not happy with myself i'm not happy with my shape or the way i look and so when i did reintroduce foods I actually reintroduced whole food. So in a weird way, that was kind of a, a plus for me from having a, a, a mental health condition. So those are the things that I want you to think about. I want you to think about turning your pyramid back up to the right position, first of all, when it comes to your health. It, you have the ability here when it comes to cognitive function to be able to acquire more knowledge and understanding. I mean, the video that you're watching right now here on YouTube is something where you're hopefully acquiring some knowledge from me or getting a bit of a better understanding. And hopefully this pyramid of transcendence has, has given you some of that. However, road, pull the pyramid back up the correct way. You want to make the top of your pyramid the thing that you want to transcend towards, but you need to look at your needs, your human needs and finally guys if you can transcend for both the health pyramid let's call it and the success and financial pyramid those two pyramids will go up at the same time if you focus on your health you're going to be ill for for, for less amounts of time you're not going to develop metabolic diseases such as diabetes atherosclerosis cholesterol you know the list goes on and on and that means you're going to have more time to work on what you want to work on. It's going to give you more time to be able to acquire the knowledge that you need to be successful on the other pyramid. So what I would look at doing is focusing on the basic needs of a human and then replicating that on the, the other pyramid if you want to achieve success. It could even be that you want to achieve, you know, getting your first house or something like that. That could be your, you know, top of your pyramid. However, you need to put all the other things in underneath it. And if you're ignoring the very basic fundamentals, in my opinion, you're not going to be able to achieve the knowledge and understanding that you need because you're not going to have the self-confidence or respect to do that. So I hope this video helps you guys and I watch it a few times over. Think about what you would like to transcend towards when it comes to your health and to your well-being, and then go right back down to the bottom of your basic human needs. And think about those hormones that I spoke about as well when it comes to dopamine, serotonin and insulin and also the stress hormone cortisol. Think about those things as to where you put yourself within those basic needs and are your needs being met. Okay guys, I hope you found this video useful. Please like and subscribe and also leave a comment at the bottom in the comment box. I promise that I will get back to you. Until next time, be fit, be healthy, and of course, be a boss bar. It's the Yo Bossy Wish.